puffy mochi paw pads. Ever since I made my first plush with this type of toe bean, it's been my favorite detail on the plushies that I make. I use an embroidery machine to do this to get the cleanest results, but you can do applique without one. First, mochi minky is essential to getting the right amount of puff to these paw pads. This is the type of fabric used in squishmallows. Check out my video on working with mochi minky to learn more about this type of fabric. I also have a guide on my website, which I'll link in the description. Since I made that video, Big Z Fabric has started producing their own mochi after a bunch of us requested it. But Hope and Textiles on AliExpress still has the most color options. Joann's has expanded their availability and the colors available, but it has the least amount of stretch out of the three options. Second, you'll also need some mochi stuffing. It's much fluffier and softer than traditional polyfill. Again, you can check out my other video on Mochi Minky or the guide on my website on where to buy it. Third, I make sure to use cut away stabilizer behind my applique. Not only is it stronger for the tight satin stitches so it won't tear away when you're trying to stitch it out, but it also helps with the stuffing part of this technique. Fourth, a pair of forceps or hemostats or some tweezers are really helpful, but it can be done without. It's gonna be much more difficult though. If you're using an embroidery machine, start by designing your paw pads in your embroidery program. You can either do a gathered look or you can do a separated look. First, create an outline of where the paw pad will go. This can just be a long length basting stitch. Then you make a tack down stitch for the outside of the paw pads. If you're doing a gathered look, you also need to add a stitch to define each bean. I use a straight stitch with a lower one millimeter length. You should tack down the outside first and then stitch out the individual ones next to avoid the fabric from shifting. Finally, finish off the paw pad with a satin stitch. If I make a smaller paw pad, I'll omit this sometimes, but if you do, it's important to make the tacking stitch be very small so it's strong since you're going to be putting some pressure on the fabric when you stuff the beans. Optionally, you can add an outline of your pattern piece for easy cutting out later, but I didn't do that in this example here. When you go to execute your embroidery, first run the outline stitch. You do not want to cut away the minky behind where the mochi is going to go as it's necessary to have it later. Place a piece of mochi larger than the outline stitch over the area. You want to leave enough room on the edges so you don't run out of fabric when you stitch it all down and trim away the excess fabric. And just so you know, the type of mochi I'm using here is from Hope and Textiles. You can secure the edges with tape or just hold it down like I did here, but be careful if you do this and don't get your fingers caught. First, the outside tacking stitch is going to run. Then it's going to do the inside where it makes the individual beans if you're doing the gathered look. Otherwise, you're just going to tack down each individual bean. Now you need to trim away the excess fabric. I start with a pair of duckbill scissors and then clean them up with curved embroidery scissors. If you don't have duckbill scissors, you can just use a normal pair of fabric scissors. And if you don't have curved embroidery scissors, I'd highly recommend getting a pair. It's very hard to get clean applique without them and they are one of my favorite tools in plush making. When you're done trimming away the excess fabric, clean away all the fibers, place a piece of water soluble stabilizer on top, and Sulky Salvi is my favorite type. Run the satin stitch and remove it from the hoop when you're done. Trim away the stabilizer from outside of the paw pad, but do not cut it away from the inside of the paw pad. Depending on your pattern, you may or may not want to sew this piece together first. The paw pads get pretty big, so it can be awkward to sew around them after you stuff them when you're actually going ahead and sewing your plush together. Since this is just an example, I'm going to go ahead and stuff the beans now. You need to carefully cut a small hole in both the cutaway stabilizer and the minky behind the mochi. You need to make this hole small, but large enough to fit your forceps through the holes. I like to pinch the mochi with my non-dominant hand and try to pull it away from the minky and stabilizer while I cut into it with my dominant hand. I try to make small cuts and gradually make them bigger so I don't cut more than I need to. Obviously, if you accidentally cut through your mochi, you're going to have to start all over. When you add the mochi stuffing, you are pushing out the shape you stitch with the stuffing. 
The strength of the cutaway stabilizer and the mangy behind it serves as a wall for the stuffing to sit against and push out the mochi. If you didn't have the cutaway stabilizer, the minky is just going to stretch backwards and the shape won't come out as far. Having both the stabilizer and the minky helps strengthen this wall. If you cut the hole too large, then the stuffing is just going to fall out from the hole. So it's important just to cut a hole small enough. Hope and Textiles Mochi Stuffing is my absolute favorite, followed by Fairfield's Silky Polyfill. Normal polyfill is not as soft and it clumps way too much for this technique, so it's just not going to work. Adding the stuffing is a bit difficult and finicky because of how small the hole is. This is why forceps, hemostats, or tweezers are handy. I like to add small amounts at a time. Fill the beans as much as you'd like. The more you add, the bigger they'll get, but they'll also be harder and not as soft and squishy. This pad is a nice balance between shaped and soft. Once you stuff the beans evenly and to your liking, you're all done. You can use this technique to do all sorts of fun things like puffy eyes like I did on Drago here. You can see that I just used normal minky so it's not as puffy as mochi minky, but it's still a nice effect. And that's about it. Now roll that beautiful bean footage.